This was a huge win for the Jazz. They they beat the 76ers. They continue their winning streak to six games, which I think has kind of been a quiet six-game winning streak. Hopefully, they can keep this going well into double digits, and, and it can be a loud winning streak. Uh, they had a couple of close games during this streak, so that's hasn't been a bunch of blowouts. Six games isn't huge, but you need to put together a lot of six-game streaks. They, the Jazz go up against the Wizards next. Um, the Wizards are looking better than they have in years past, so I wouldn't write that off as an automatic win yet, but the Jazz should be the better team and and they should come out and and win that basketball game. And good news is we don't have to worry about playing the 76ers again. Um, Last year with Ben Simmons, I don't know if we, I think we played one with Ben Simmons and Embiid and one was, Embiid was out and Simmons gave us a tough time. We didn't have to play Simmons at all, at least when he was on the Sixers. He might get traded to another team. That's a whole that's a whole nother thing. But we don't play the Sixers again this year. We won both of them. That's great. We can mark that one off. That's a that's a good playoff team that we got two solid wins against. So that's good for the Jazz. Um and that's that's great for a morale boost. Even though there's there's that Simmons is out, they're not playing as great as they could be right now. Uh, but still Embiid is amazing. Gobert did a great job against him. They Held him to under 20 points. I think he had a little over 10 rebounds. I'll have to double check on that one. But the player of the game was Rudy, Go- Rudy Gobert. He was not the highest scorer on the team, which he rarely is. Uh, it was a very team game when it comes to scoring. Donovan Mitchell was the highest with 22. And I don't think any other player got into the 20s. But speaking of getting into the 20s, Gobert did get into the 20s in another stat, and that is rebounding. He came out with 21 rebounds. Uh, against a great center in Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid's not like he's not the greatest rebounder in the league, but he's a very good rebounder. Um, and Drummond is a very good rebounder as well. And Whiteside and Gobert. Whiteside had ten rebounds, I believe. Gobert came out with twenty one. So I think the the Utah Jazz rebounding game is pretty solid. Having those two centers on um getting minutes. So. Great job for them. I know Gobert started the season with a, some great rebounding numbers. Some people were talking about he just wasn't going up against as good as centers. They came out against another team with two great centers and killed in the rebounding game. The 76ers walked out tonight with 34 rebounds and the Jazz had 52. The Jazz had 16 offensive rebounds compared to six for the 76ers. So that's like 10 extra possessions that the Jazz got that the 76ers didn't get to get because our rebounding game was on point um some of those were multiple offensive rebounds in the same possession so maybe not quite the same weight but the uh, i know there's one where it was it was gobert and yang gobert misses the shot goes for the tip misses the tip gets the rebound and then lays it in from there so there's two offensive rebounds one bucket but they still got the points and the jazz came out with it with a what looks like a blowout win um it was the jazz were losing at the end of the first jazz had a great second quarter and they they fought through and closed they closed out the game really solid winning the fourth quarter 30 to 20 which made it seem more of a blowout win um they won by 24 so uh if it were if they tied in the fourth it was still would have been 14 they they're pretty solid going into the fourth so Great win for the Jazz. I don't like. I think Gobert is worth talking about a ton. Um, I'll kind of go through my normal spiel on the game. I'll go through some things that I saw with the with the team stats, uh, a few things that I saw with the box score, and that will be that. And then we get to look forward to the game against the Wizards and hopefully see this streak continue. But so for for people who haven't seen me do a, a breakdown, I know Nate's been Nate's done the past couple of them. Um, I there's a couple things that I keep bringing up with the Jazz. Uh, if if you see me do a breakdown, you probably know them by heart because I I keep talking about these. Um, and so that is that one. The Jazz are giving up too many possessions, whether that be through offensive rebounds or turnovers, which leads to the Jazz not shooting nearly as many shots. Well, not nearly. They on average they shoot about four to five shots less per game than their opponent. Uh, which is tough. The Jazz have still been winning basketball games. They're currently 18 and seven. Um, 
but it's tough to win those games. Like it makes the Jazz really rely on free throws and three pointers, which luckily the Jazz have been great at this season. Um, so I I really like the three things that I really look at are: did the Jazz get as many shots as their opponent? Did the Jazz get more offensive rebounds than their opponent? And did the Jazz turn the ball over less than their opponent? Um, and those are those are the things that I've re- mainly been looking for. That's a long spiel, not related to this game at all. Um, but I brought it up and, and probably took a little bit extra time on that because the Jazz did great in all of these. Maybe, maybe not great in turnovers. They they turned the ball over twelve times, which for the Jazz is excellent. That's well below average for them. And they forced twelve turnovers from the Seventy Sixers. So it, it came out even. I'm okay with that. Like, I, d- I want the Jazz to be turning over the ball. Like, well, obviously zero times. That's not realistic. But in that 12 range, I think is a great spot for them to be. Uh, that's this season. That's right about where the rest, the, the best teams as far as turnovers go. And in the, in the league right now are right around 12. So that's great. Um, but at the end of the day, when it comes to a game by game basis, even if the Jazz turn over the ball 20 times and the other team turns it over 25, that's great. And another stat to look at is points off of turnovers. And so even though the Jazz turned over the ball the same amount of times as the 76ers, they scored seven more points off of turnovers. So that's one thing that I have noticed is the Jazz have been very efficient at scoring the basketball off of a turnover, which has has taken some of the sting off of how many turnovers they've been giving up. Um, but starting at the top with shooting, the Jazz weren't lights out, but they were good. They were exactly where we want to see them. 47% from the field, 37% from three. Uh, their free throws were a little bit low, but free throw percentage, you don't shoot nearly as many. That the percentage can vary quite a bit. They shot 24. They missed seven of them. 70%, it's fine. I'd like to see that higher, but 70% is a little bit below average for NBA. So I'll live with that. Um, rebounds. I talked about how they, they blew the Sixers out of the water with the rebounding, and a, like all everything just kind of matches up. The Sixers got them in a couple categories, but you don't need every category to win a basketball game. Um, and really, what this game came down to is the Jazz were able to get second and third opportunities for themselves, like that play with Gobert. Uh, where he got two offensive rebounds and ended up scoring. And it came down to that the Jazz were hitting threes and the 76ers weren't. The 76ers took 33 threes, which is quite a few. Uh, The Jazz took 40, but the 76ers only made six of those threes. So uh, that was less than 20%. And the math, that's 27 possessions gone because they missed three-pointers. So I think that's really what the game came down to. Um... Jazz got a few extra points from free throws. The Jazz just made more of their shots. So 76ers, they they didn't really have a great game. And speaking of that, let's hop over to the box score. I like to focus on the Jazz on these, but it's always fun to talk about how the other team's doing, how they performed in this game. And unfortunately for Sixers fans, there's not a ton of positive things to say about this game in particular. Obviously, Embiid, he's, he's going to have a great night every night um i wouldn't call tonight a great night for him but he was definitely the best player on their team he had nine rebounds 19 points he came down with oh he came out with three steals and a block um and let me double check this but except for one player who played seven minutes he had the best plus minus on the team so that's how good of a player joel Embiid is even though he's not like He's not going out there and scoring 40 points and having as big of an impact on the game as he could. He's impacting the game in other ways, getting steals, helping the plus minus so that when he was out on the floor, uh, it was a pretty close game. It was really, and, and I don't, that's, that's an interesting stat to look at because it's not all, always the player who impacts that. It's the lineups that he's out there with. And it's also the lineups that the other team puts out there against him. Um, but, there were a couple of players who had okay games. Uh, Seth Curry kind of did what you expect him to. He had 18 points, um, shot the goal, shot the ball fine, over 50% from the field, uh, 33% from three. Um, 
I had Tyrese Maxey. Stat wise, he didn't have a great game. I think he did make some good plays. Um, he's a fun player to watch. So I'm kind of sad that we don't get to play the 76ers again this year because um because I think I I like Tyrese Maxey. I think he he's he'll be an All Star in a couple of years. Would be my prediction. Uh, two to three years, right in that window. Um, but other than that, like no one really stood out. Tobias Harris. 17 and 7 I feel like that's kind of average for him that's that's one thing that I I I like Tobias Harris I've liked him since like before he was an all-star caliber player he, he's never made it to an all-star game but he's right in that caliber um, I've been following his career since he was pretty young but one as he's gotten better and as he's he's performed as well as he has this season and as he has the past several seasons the one thing that I, I want to see more from him is is I don't see him step up and take over games as often as I would like. Granted, I don't follow the Sixers as closely as I should, so I might be missing a few games. But I feel like he's he's when he's healthy and he, he plays his minutes, he's really consistent. He'll get right around 20 points, usually a little less, um, nearing 10 rebounds in that 7-8 range normally. And that's kind of what he does for your team. And that's not bad. Uh, but I, I feel like there's more that he could do, and I don't. I'm not saying this to like get on his back or anything. I'm just saying this because I, I don't know if it's him being with the 76ers, the system that he's in, uh, mindset thing. I, I don't know what's going on. I know he's when Ben Simmons was playing, he was the third option to score. Um, but I would like to see him be a little bit more aggressive, especially in games like this where. You're going into the fourth quarter down by double digits. Um, Joel Embiid's not being the most aggressive. He's not super efficient. He was 8 for 18, which is fine, but he wasn't taking a ton of shots. That's kind of a sign for Harris where he shot 6 for 12. He's shooting really efficient, but he wasn't getting a lot of shots up. I would like to see Harris kind of call for the ball, kind of make some offense on his own, because I think he has the ability to do that. Um, But that's kind of what I saw from him. I spent more time than I planned on the Sixers, but let's hop over to the Jazz. Talked about Gobert. He, to confirm, he had 17 points, 21 rebounds, two blocks. That is about as good as you could ask for him. I think the only thing that would have made this a little bit sweeter is if he scored three more points to have a 2020 game, but it wasn't needed. Um, and in a blowout, he, he didn't even play 30 minutes. He played 29 minutes. In a blowout, I would much rather rest than than have him rest a few extra minutes then then go for the 2020 so he was right there he could have had it um i mentioned donovan mitchell had 22 points his efficiency was fine from the field three points were great he was five for ten um but really what i want to point out and like this was a really spread out scoring game for the jazz we had uh, let me count it up uh eight players in double digit scoring which is awesome and a lot of that came off the bench we had um uh, quick math 46 48 bench points um most of those were from four players uh we had Ingles, clarkson whiteside and gay all over 10 or all 10 points or higher um gay is another one of those players that i think is obviously he's not the same caliber players to Bice harris but he he comes in off the bench five six rebounds 10 12 points Really similar play style, just not the same caliber. Um, and I think Gay has the ability where if we need him to, he can come in and, and step up and score and and take over a portion of a basketball game. Uh, I don't want to see him do it all the time, but I would like to see Rudy Gay be aggressive when he needs to. Um, I haven't seen much aggression from him. Uh, but that's okay. He's he's four. For, he was four for five from the field. The only shot he missed was a wide open three, which some that's happened sometimes. I'm not gonna blame him. Whiteside was great with fourteen and ten. So right now I'm just kind of reading off the box score. You guys can look at that. Um, but great team game. The those four main guys off the bench came to play. Uh, they all had great games, and they were able to spread. Like no one on the Jazz played more than thirty minutes which is awesome because this is the back end of a back-to-back. 
Uh, they still played Mike Conley, which is kind of rare on the back end of a back-to-back. We won both games, which is huge, and we were able to win in a blowout without playing a single player over 30 minutes. So, like, 30 minutes may sound like a lot, but, like, if you think about it, if you play 30 minutes, you're resting for a quarter and a half of a basketball game. And so, with most of these players playing, like, high 20s, like, it was, they were resting more than a quarter and a half um, for the whole game, which is quite a bit, especially when you spread that out over like none of them were out there for, well, they could have been, I didn't track it super closely, but if you play it right, you're not out there for super long periods of time. They were never tired. And that goes, if you can play it right, that goes a long way in recovering and getting ready for the next game, especially with back to backs. So I think pretty straightforward win for the jazz. I'm kind of long winded. So uh, I pr- this probably could have been five minutes and I'm turning it into 15 minutes, but great win. We have a winning streak going. Let's keep it going. I'm excited to follow that. Um, and I guess one takeaway at the end of the video, the biggest takeaway that it took from this game is that the jazz, as much as I'd like to see Mitchell come out and score 30 points every night, the jazz are such a well-built team that we can have eight guys come out and score 10 plus points. So on any given night, someone's having an off night. We know we have seven other guys who can who can go out there and make stuff happen. So that's scary come playoff time. Um, I know it's a blowout. Everything's going to look better, but we've showed that we have that ability against the 76ers, who are 14 and 12. Not a great start, but expect them to have a decent seed in the playoffs uh, come playoff time. So thanks for joining me. Make sure to follow the channel wherever you're at. Like the video. Uh, you're not going to want to miss the... Like, especially when we're on a winning streak, the longer this goes, the more fun it is. So show support for the Jazz. Do whatever you can to help them win. And come here and and party with us whenever we keep the winning streak going. So thanks for joining me and go Jazz.